the next generation of graphics cards is finally here, and Intel is first out of the gate with this new mid-range card, the ARC B580. A follow-up to last year's ARC A580, it does share many similarities with its bigger brother, the ARC A770. With 12GB of VRAM and a tempting MSRP, is this the card that'll make Intel a household name for GPUs? Taking a quick look at the differences between the cards themselves and for the Intel reference design, at a glance, it's hard to tell the difference between the B580 and the A770. That's not a bad thing though, maintaining the same black rubberized texture from the last generation flagship. Its two fan cooler comes in at 28 centimeters long and 768 grams, and is powered with a single 8 pin connector. Next up is the Sparkle Titan OC. This three fan design is the longest and the heaviest of the three cards that we're looking at today at 32 centimeters long and 952 grams, but it does maintain the same two slot design as the reference edition and is still powered by a single eight pin connector. The last card we're looking at is the ASRock Steel Legend, which is also a three fan design coming in at 30 centimeters long, one gram lighter than the Sparkle at 951, but unlike the other two cards, is more of a three slot design and uses two eight pin connectors for power. But the real question is how do these three cards perform? Taking a quick look at our new test system for 2025, and we're now using a Ryzen 7 9800X3D for all these tests, paired with an MSI X870E Carbon, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6200 memory, Windows 11 Professional with VBS enabled, and the latest press driver from Intel. And starting off at 1080p, we can see that the new Intel Arc B580 is significantly faster than the last generation's Arc A580, and even has the performance crown over the flagship Arc A770. That does give all three cards better performance than the RTX 4060 and RX 7600 XT, though not quite as much as the RTX 4060 Ti or the RX 6700 XT. This does make the B580 the fastest card available from Intel, though really still competing in the mainstream or entry-level market. When compared to Nvidia, the B580 doesn't really gain any ground when looking at ray tracing performance, though it does do very well in comparison to AMD, now competing with the RX 7700 XT and the RX 6800. The bump to 1440p does help all three of these cards a little bit, gaining a few percentage points on the RTX 4060 and RX 7600 XT. Though that's not quite enough to catch the RX 6700 XT or the RTX 4060 Ti, the extra performance is appreciated, especially when looking at the minimum frame times, where each of the cards averages right around 51 FPS. While the B580 is not a card designed for 4K, it definitely does do better than most of its contemporaries. It's now significantly faster than the RX 7600 XT and RTX 4060, but thanks to the 12GB of VRAM, it is now faster than the 8GB version of the RTX 4060 Ti, with the 16GB variant now being only 6% faster. Up to this point, we've seen that all three of the B580 cards perform exactly the same, but how are they in terms of power consumption? And while gaming, all three of these cards do pretty well, using less power than the RX 7600 XT, and a bit more than the RTX 4060 Ti, with the ASRock Steel Legend using the least at 178 watts, which is ironic since it's the only card with two 8-pin power connectors. If you are looking to cap your gaming at 60 FPS, this does reduce the power consumption on these cards to just over 100 watts, which on one hand is a lot better than the outgoing Intel Arc models, but compared to other cards in its performance bracket, that is substantially more. What isn't substantially more is the fan noise, especially on the ASRock Steel Legend, which is one of the quietest cards we've tested at 24.1 dBA. The Intel and Sparkle cards also do very well at 29.8 and 31.3 dBA respectively, both comparing very well to their contemporaries. Normalizing the fan noise at 35 dBA does highlight the differences in the cooler designs, 
with the ASRock ARC B580 Steel Legend, with its triple slot design and three fans having the best cooler at 53.4C. The Sparkle ARC B580 Titan is not that far behind at 56.3C, with last place going to the Intel reference design at 68.1C, which does make sense given that it's the smallest and lightest of the three. Quickly on the topic of overclocking, while Intel has made a lot of improvements in its overclocking options, in its current available state for these cards, it was pretty finicky and did crash several times on us, so we weren't able to test it as thoroughly as we usually do. Using the Intel reference design, we were able to increase performance by 7% by overclocking, though it remains to be seen whether or not the ASRock, with its higher power limits, would net you any additional performance. Not that you would need any additional performance to make these cards a good value. At an MSRP of $270, the Sparkle, Titan, and ASRock Steel Legend are both just as good a value as an RX 6800 XT or an RTX 3060, and really a lot better value than most other cards. This is doubly true when looking at the Intel reference design, which has an MSRP of $250. It doesn't have one of the better coolers found on the ASRock or the Sparkle, and doesn't have the expanded power limits found on the ASRock, but when it comes to pure gaming, it offers identical performance, which gives it a better value. And really, there's only one card that has better value at 1080p than the ARC B580, and it's the ARC A580. While Intel's latest chip is 42% faster than the A580, it is also 47% more expensive. But that's it. That's the singular example of any card that has better value than the Intel Arc B580. And it paints a good picture for where Intel is going this generation. For an extra $20, both the Sparkle and the ASRock cards are pretty good options since they do include better coolers. But if you're looking for value, then your choice is Intel.